What is the paper ceiling? What does it mean? What are its good sides and what are its problems? This is Brian coming to you for another vlog with one of my cats at least who will appear behind me to show off. She loves to photobomb any video recording. The paper ceiling, if you don't know the term, refers to the idea that somebody might be able to advance in their career but are blocked by paper. And the paper here means an academic degree. So they might not be able to get one job because they don't have a master's degree. They might advance because they've done really well in their work, but they don't have the right bachelor's degree. And the idea is that this is unfair. This is holding people back, especially people who have the skills, knowledge, the attainment, the expertise. They just don't have the piece of paper that signifies this. So what can be done? Well, recently there's been a push across the country for people to be able to get jobs that don't have the who don't have the paper. And we've seen this happen in city levels. Philadelphia, for example, opened a lot of public jobs to people who didn't have academic credentials. And then we've seen more than a dozen states do this, including Pennsylvania, where Philadelphia is, as well as Maryland. And we've seen this come from Republicans and Democrats, red states and blue. Most recently and perhaps most importantly, uh, we've seen both President Biden and Vice President Harris repeatedly say that they want to celebrate and support jobs that don't require a college degree. President Biden has been saying this. Uh, he said it in the most recent State of the Union address. Uh, Vice President Harris, who of course is uh, one of the two can major candidates for president, has been saying this on the campaign trail and it's in her official statement of policies that they want to open up as many jobs as possible to people who don't have higher education degrees. And I have to say, on the humanitarian aspect, on a humanitarian level, this sounds fantastic. I mean, it's, I think, pretty easy to think of lots of people that you might know who would be advancing in their career, who might be getting promotions, new jobs, that kind of thing, but for whatever reason, never got uh, the academic degree they need for this. It might be that they couldn't afford it. It might be their life intervened. It might be they had bad experiences in academia, including K through 12, but for whatever reason, they didn't have it. So this sounds fantastic, especially we know that, generally speaking, there are a lot of exceptions, that people who only have a high school diploma or less tend to make less money and have a less satisfactory career than people who have higher academic credentials. So, so far, so good. This could be a very beneficial humanitarian thing. Why might this be a problem? Well, there, there are two reasons. One's cultural and one is think of it as nonprofit financial. The cultural reason is that for maybe a generation, American culture and American policy have believed that, have believed in college for everyone, that the, the more post-secondary experience we get, the better we are. And th there are a lot of reasons behind this. You could think about those who are focused on a knowledge economy, so we want to generate as many people with knowledge as possible to work those jobs and create those uh, new uh, enterprises. You could think of the many non-pecuniary benefits that we often see attached to higher education, such as increased lifespan, better health outcomes, better civic participation, as well as, of course, people who make more money. I, again, overall, and there are a lot of exceptions, the college premium exists, but it is not a universal thing that setting aside student debt. But this, this whole idea is also predicated on the idea that a well-informed citizenry uh, is best for democracy. And we've seen this with people who have college degrees are more likely to vote, more likely to run for office, more likely to communicate with the representatives and so on. So we've had this idea for quite some time and it's percolated all the way from the White House all the way down to high school and middle school counseling and class design. That's why in many, for many reasons, we got rid of home ec and votech in high school and shop class and replaced it with academics for everyone. So that was the big push. And until about 2012, this largely succeeded, where every year America kept putting more and more students through higher education. Now, we, we reached a peak in 2012. That's the subject of my new book. I'll be happy to talk about that later. But for right now, I just want to mention, ever since 2012, enrollment has ticked down year by year. And although we've had a slight increase last year and something of an increase this year, we're still nowhere near 2012 levels. So if we add to this tearing up the paper ceiling, if we add to this the idea that you don't need post-secondary credentials in order to get a good job, 
then we might just be stepping back for college for everyone. The whole cultural consensus seems to be shattering. Now, the second problem has to do with the finances of nonprofits. By nonprofits, I mean colleges and universities. Not all are nonprofits, most are. We do have a for profit sector, but let me set that aside for the purposes of this video. Let me just focus on public universities and colleges, that is, nominally state funded and state supported, and private universities and colleges. Now, publics are about two thirds of higher ed, privates are about one third, roughly speaking. Well, Overwhelmingly, they depend on student fees in order to pay their bills and keep their doors open. Uh, I mentioned that two-thirds are state-funded. Well, that state funding has dropped, generally speaking, for a couple of generations, and now, usually speaking, constitutes a minority of the income for public institutions. Of course, private institutions don't have that state funding, and for all these together, the majority of their funding largely comes from student fees, from tuition, from room and board, from housing, and so on. Well, if we decide that not going to college is a good career path, if we get the word out that not everyone needs to go to college, what if people listen and fewer and fewer people go to college? That might continue to depress enrollment even further. And these colleges and universities that need to have enrollment, that need students to come in to pay the bills, with fewer of them, you see the problem. So ripping up the paper ceiling Sounds like a really good idea. I'm not sure if we are culturally ready to uh, think through the implications. Uh, I'm not sure that colleges and universities are really grappling with what this might mean. So that's it for now. Hope everybody is well. Take care. See you next time.